St. Patrick's Day is just around the corner, and if you know anything about Irish brands, chances are you're familiar with Jameson Irish Whiskey. But there are loads of other Irish whiskies out there on the market, and maybe you're tired of Jameson. Maybe you want to see something different. Maybe you want to try something new. So I've got you covered in this week's video, where I'm going to show you five different alternatives to Jameson to try out this St. Patrick's Day. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Matt, I'm a whiskey nerd and like I said this week I'm going to show you five different alternatives to Jameson for this St. Patrick's Day. They're going to range from a kind of a budget entry level all the way up to something a bit more upmarket, something a bit harder to find but something with a lot more flavour. But if you do want to stay in that entry level or budget Irish whiskey category, we have a video for you. We have a video where we kind of blind tasted a bunch of different entry level Irish whiskies at that kind of budget friendly price point to see which one was the best tasting at that price point. So I'll put a link to it up above and there'll be a link at the end of the video. So make sure to check that one out after this video if you haven't already seen it. But now let's get on with the main event. First up is a Jameson Castmates Stout Edition. Now I know what you're thinking, I'm barely into the video and I'm already showing another Jameson. But trust me, this is a nice change. This is a whiskey that was aged for a short period of time in stout barrels. A stout is a dark Irish beer and it has this really nice, rich, dark chocolate kind of coffee flavour that comes through it and that has imparted onto the Jameson. So, well yeah, you're going to get that standard Jameson sweetness, the kind of nice vanilla sharpness to it there but it's wrapped up with that nice chocolate, a nice bit of espresso, a really nice kind of rich rounded out whiskey. Mm. And again, on the palate, it has that unmistakable core of Jameson, but it's really wrapped up in a nice rich round wrapper that changes it up and makes it a little bit different. So if you're the kind of person who can't get away from Jameson this St. Patrick's Day, maybe give the castmates a try. It's a little bit different, it basically costs the same price and it should be available pretty much everywhere, but it will give you a slightly different flavour at that kind of budget price point. Next up, for those of you who like making cocktails, the Rowan Co. Classic Blend is where to go. This is a nice, sweet, kind of entry level whiskey that comes in at 45% ABV, so it will have that nice presence in a cocktail. On the nose, it's nice and rich, it's got a bit of that nice grain sweetness coming through, as well as plenty of vanilla and plenty of caramel. And on the palate, it's nice, it's rich, it's round, there's a bit of maltiness, but it's not so strong, it's not so overpowering that it'll dominate a cocktail. This whiskey is nice to sip, but it's great in a cocktail because it's got that nice sweetness to it. It doesn't overpower a drink. So if you aren't looking for a whiskey forward cocktail, if you aren't looking to really just be punched in the face by the whiskey, if you're looking to just make a nice drink that you can enjoy, Rowan Co, that's where it's at. Third on our list, and a whiskey that's just as good neat as it is in a cocktail, is the Teeling Small Batch. This is a blended whiskey, again, it's got a blend of malt and grain. It was aged in bourbon barrels and finished for about six months in rum casks. That rum cask aging has definitely had a lot of impact on this whiskey. It's given it a nice kind of sweet wrapper. There's more brown sugar, there's more kind of deep molasses sweetness to it, while allowing that kind of maltiness at the core of the whiskey to still stand up strong. Mm. The palate in this whiskey also has a lot to unpack, yet you're gonna have that standard kind of vanilla, the caramel, but you also got a nice bit of kind of maltiness coming through. You got a nice rich, kind of rummy influence coming through. It does have a nice amount of layers to unpack if you're sipping it neat. And because it's at 46% ABV, it will shine through in a cocktail. It will be noticeable and you will be able to kind of taste that whiskey in a whiskey cocktail. So this one is a really good kind of mid-range whiskey if you're looking for something that you can sip or you can put in a cocktail. Next up, it's a whiskey for all you malt maniacs out there. The people who love single malt whiskies, we've got the Dingle Single Malt. Now, Dingle are a really nice whiskey producer. They've been producing a lot of small batches recently, but within the last year, they released this. It's their core single malt. It should be available pretty much anywhere. It has a really wide distribution and it delivers a lot of flavor. It comes in at 46.3% alcohol, so yeah, I mean, if you put in a cocktail, it will stand up, it will stand out, it will have a lot of flavor there, but this is one that's more for sipping meat. On the nose, you're gonna get that maltiness, of course, but then you've got some nice kind of herbal notes to it. This was aged in bourbon and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks, so there's some nuttiness in there, there's some nice dried fruits on the nose, and then into the palate, Mm, it delivers some nice spiciness. There's a nice rich, round, 
deep kind of herbal notes, maybe some mint, maybe like a little bit of um, tropical fruits in there. It's a really nice deep whiskey with a lot to unpack. And if you're looking for something that's a little bit more upmarket, it's good for sipping, you can enjoy slowly. The Dingle Single Malt is really where it's at, especially if you're a fan of single malt whiskies. And for the fifth whiskey on this list, I'm actually going to give you a twofer. This is Green Spot and Red Breast. These are both single pot still whiskies. That's the style of whiskey that's unique to Ireland. So if you're looking for a whiskey that is quintessentially Irish, that shows you what Irish whiskey is all about, Green Spot or Red Breast is really where you should go. They're a single pot still whiskey and they come from the same distillery, but because of the rules of single pot still whiskey, they have different mash bills and they taste completely differently. For example, Green Spot, it's a bit younger, so some of the flavors, they're a little bit less balanced. It's definitely leaning into some of those flavors a bit more. These are both bourbon and sherry finished, but the Green Spot delivers a lot more kind of fruitiness, a lot more kind of sweetness in it. On the nose, there was this rich vanilla, caramel, and kind of green apple note. And then on the palate, that's delivered again. You got that rich vanilla, caramel, green apple, and it's accentuated by some really nice, strong, kind of peppery spice that's consistent with a pot still whiskey. Red Breast, on the other hand, it's a 12 year old whiskey. So it's had a little bit longer to mature and to round out some of those flavors. So it delivers again, you're gonna get that vanilla from the bourbon, you're gonna get that caramel from the bourbon, but in terms of the fruitiness, you're gonna get more kind of raisins and dried fruits. And that spiciness, it's gone away from black pepper, it's gone maybe into cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, that kind of Christmas bait and spices. Mm. And on the palate, it delivers a very nice kind of balanced finish. None of the notes are really stand up on top of each other. It's just a really nice, easy to sip whiskey. So if you're looking to try the kind of quintessential Irish whiskies, Green Spot or Red Breast are the way to go. If you're looking for something that's a bit more punchy with that peppery spice and bright kind of green apple fruitiness, go for the Green Spot. If you're looking for something that's a bit deeper, more relaxed, more kind of balanced with some of those Christmassy baking spices, go for the Red Breast. So there you have a whistle stop tour of five or maybe six different Irish whiskies to try out this St. Patrick's Day. Each of those whiskies is great in their own right, and they're all going to deliver you something that's slightly different than that classic Jameson. That's not to say though that Jameson is a bad whiskey. I mean, this is the best selling Irish whiskey on the planet for a reason. It's got some nice sweet notes to it. It's got some nice kind of rich sherry notes to it. It's an easy to drink whiskey. It goes well in a cocktail. It's easy to drink neat. That's just a simple, easy to enjoy whiskey. If you want to see some more detailed tasting notes from Jameson, I'll be putting out my own review of Jameson whiskey this Wednesday. So if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and you'll be notified when that review drops. Other than that, make sure you check out that video where we rank all the entry-level Irish whiskies because you might see something in that video that you want to try out this St. Patrick's Day. Also, let me know in the comments below what you'll be drinking this St. Patrick's Day. Will it be whiskey neat? Will it be cocktails? Or will it be a beer? Let me know. And that's all there is to say, so I will see you in the next video. Sláinte.